Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another Catskull Academy lesson for EVE Online. In today's video I want to answer one of the most commonly asked questions in my comment section. Almost every video where I've put a fit out, someone asks, can you show me a skill plan to get into this ship? And ultimately putting a skill plan out in every single fit video I do is going to take a long time. It requires me to go through each of those ships, find every single skill that is going to make it necessary, and while well, we don't really have the time for that now, do we? So instead I thought it was better to talk about how to pick the skills that you need to fly a vessel. And I'm going to do this using one of my alts and the Varga. So I'm going to imagine that one of my alts wants to skill into flying a Varga, and we're going to showcase how you figure out how to do that. It gives you an idea of what skills to be training and where to go from there. Now this isn't a proof perfect method. There are some bits that we'll talk about that you're going to have to kind of adapt, learn and take a look at things and figure out what it is you actually need to do for yourself. EVE Online is one of those games I can't really tell you exactly what to do. You need to figure out some of it on your own so I'm aiming to kind of arm you with the knowledge of how to do that. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please take that second to hit like, drop a comment, and if you want to go the extra mile to help support content like this and the channel, I'll show you all of that later. Finally, if you are new to EVE Online, I've got two big tips for you. First of all, scroll down into the description of this video, click the referral link, log in, and when you next log into your account, you will have one million free skill points to apply to one of your characters. It gives me a nice little kickback as well, so thank you everyone who does click on that referral link. Finally, come join the Catskull Community Discord in the description down below. It's a great way to meet, meet like-minded EVE Online players, and if you do want to join the Catskull Cartel, that's where you apply for the in-game corp. Anyway, let's jump right into talking about how to set up skill queues. Proper skill queue management is a vital skill for capsuleers in New Eden. Now, whilst getting it wrong isn't absolutely catastrophic due to how skill points work. Essentially, they are accrued over time. Therefore, if you do happen to put a load of skills points into skills you're not going to use, it's just pushing back the ones that you do actually need. It means you're going to take longer to get where you want to go, but it's not completely catastrophic if you have put skill points in things that you're not actually going to use. Now, ultimately, you could just go into the skill manager and start adding skills left, right and center. But again, that is just a path to getting a load of stuff you don't really need or giving yourself a massive headache trying to figure out which ones you do need. Fortunately, there is a much easier way to set up a skill plan based on a ship that you do actually want to fly. And that's what I'm going to showcase in this video. Now, first things first, what this video isn't. We're not going to be talking about things like cerebral accelerators, implants, neural remapping, or even buying skill points and skill extraction and stuff like that. Those are topics that we'll cover elsewhere in the Catskull Academy. I have already done a video on neural remapping, and I do strongly recommend after this video going and checking that one out. I will try to remember to link it in the description down below. Now, obviously, we are doing a targeted skill plan here. This means we need to have a ship in mind that we want to fly. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. Ultimately, the main way I'm going to show today is if you've already identified a ship and a fit that you would like to fly. You may have done this through watching one of my or one of someone else's videos. You may have found it on something like Eve Workbench or Abyss Trackers or whatever. You've gone in, you've found a, a particular fit that you like the look of. Now, you can highlight that fit out of the description of one of my videos or from those external websites and then copy that to your clipboard. Then we're going to open up the fitting screen. Now, if you don't have the full fitting screen like this, we need to open up the browser tab. You just click on the little spanner here and this will open this up. Now, with that fit copied to your clipboard, we're going to come down to this little icon here in the bottom left, import and export, click on that and then import from clipboard and it'll bring this up. And so here you can see the Varga fit that I've already linked. You've seen the Varga early on. This is the one that was in the uh, Varga video that I did. What we're going to do from here, though, is just note that some of these have little X's on them. Some of them have blue ticks. Blue ticks means you have the skill to use these. Red crosses mean you don't have the skills. We then click simulate. Now, this will load this into the in-game simulator. This means that you don't have to do this by copying and pasting. You could just simulate any ship you like, fit it the way you want it to, and then figure out what you're going to need to make that work. With this loaded into the simulator, we're going to come up to these icons here in the top left. Now, the little gray one we can ignore. This is just a fitting notice, things like diminishing returns here, where it's saying there are things in this fit that may not be optimal. 
we can usually ignore that because it's just the game saying, hey, there's diminishing returns on here. This is perfect for what I actually want out of this ship, but that's a different topic for a different video. It's the orange one that we need to look at. And what we have here when we highlight over this is incomplete skills. Now you can see this lists everything that is required to fly this ship to its basic ability. This is just to be able to actually use all of these modules and you'll see that by mousing over this there are some things that now have little orange exclamation marks on. Notably the turrets in the high slots, we've got the micro jump drive in the mid slots, those are all highlighted with a little orange exclamation mark meaning we cannot use those right now. As it actually happens, we also can't use some of the stuff in the cargo bay or the drone hold, and we also can't even undock the ship. What you do have here though here is now this list of skills on the left hand side. We can see that because of the drones that I've got in the hold, I'm going to need to have the Amar drone specialization at least trained to one. Then that requires me to at least have drones five. The little dot means that that needs to also be trained up there as well, but we've already got that skill book. Therefore, I'm gonna need Amar drone specialization one and drones all the way up to five. We're gonna need Galente drone specialization because those are also in the hold as well. We're gonna need large auto cannon specialization one, light drone operation five, Marauders 1, Micro Jump Drive Operation 1, Minmatar Battleship 5, Anchoring 4, and Propulsion Jamming 5. That is everything we need regarding this fit. Now you can just literally from here, come down, click buy and train. This will open up a, when a menu here that tells you how much these are all to buy just straight out of the skill book. And you can buy and inject that and immediately start training those. That said, obviously skill books can be cheaper on the market. So if you're somewhere like Jita, check the prices and you might find you can buy these skills separately. This does mean you might need a pen and paper or make a note on your phone and a message or whatever, just which skills it is you need to buy. So we buy those, we inject them, and that's gonna give us an idea of what we need to achieve the bare minimum. Now, of course, there are going to be skills beyond this as well. The Magic 14, for example, are always going to be beneficial. We can look at this fit and see that even if, you know, we've got the stuff bare minimum to fly it, there are going to be things that are still beneficial. And to do that, we just look at each of the modules one by one. So in this case, we can go, right, well, we've got 800 millimeter repeating cannon twos. Those are cannons, right? Therefore, we're gonna need some gunnery skills. Obviously, we need to have the bare minimum for this anyway, but it might also be worth trading up things like surgical strike or motion tracking, that kind of thing to a base level, at least to three, and then you can push them up higher than that. As we come further around, we've got shield boosters and multi-spectrum shield hardeners. Therefore, we can go into the shield category of the skill queue, of the skill book and have a look at some of those skills and increase those as well. Same when we come to the lows, you just have a look at what's around on your ship and what is going to be required in order to make that work. Now, I'm actually going to also open up the skill book now and we'll just have a look at some of the other things we can do here with that. So I've already mentioned, for example, shields. So let's go across to shields. Now here you can see this alt is actually fairly well trained up in certain skills anyway, so we can just pull these up. But there are gonna be some of these that as you mouse over them and read them, you can go, oh, yeah, that definitely sounds like it's beneficial. Like if you're looking at your resistances on the ship and thinking, oh, one of those is a little bit low, you might decide you're gonna push these up a little bit. Like if the explosive resistance was a bit low on the shields, explosive shield compensation, train that a bit higher. Shield upgrades, shield management, shield operation, all skills that once you've got to a bare minimum, you may still want to push a little bit further. Now that implies that you have a certain amount of knowledge already in which skills are relevant to the ship that you're flying. And it's not always that clear in EVE Online. That's a blessing and a curse. Some people love that complexity. Some people absolutely detest it. So the other thing we can do is, and this is gonna be controversial, I can already see a lot of people coming into the comment section and getting quite angry at this. We're gonna open up the Neocon, we're gonna to go to ship, and we're gonna to go to ship tree. Oh yes, we're gonna be talking about mastery here. Please don't unsubscribe, bear with me. Now, if we look at any particular ship on the ship tree, you've got these little brackets underneath. And as we look at some of these, you'll see that they actually get numbers in them. This is a mastery level for flying that particular ship. Can you see what this alt was skilling into? So we're gonna click onto the Varga and open up this page here, it's information. We're then gonna go to mastery. Now, this will tell you skills that you need to have trained in order to fly the ship to a certain degree of specialization. This is not to be taken as gospel. 
And to do, you know, to explain why, let's go quickly across to, for example, the Loki, because the Loki is a great example of why this is not necessarily gospel. Now, whilst looking at the Loki here, you can see we've got armor tanking, capacitor emission, cloaking, you can also click on these and see which skills it is you need, so on and so forth. That might be that you're flying a Loki and you don't want to use a cloak on it. Therefore, just training the cloaking skills just because is kind of pointless. It might be that you've got shield tanked Loki, right? Because shield tanking is a thing here, and so you would want to train those skills. Does that mean you need armor tanking? If you're not going to be armor tanking a Loki, do you need the armor tanking skills? And probably still worth training because it gets you a bit more armor resistances and stuff like that, um, which means if your shields do go down, you survive a little bit longer, but it's not vital. And as we go further up the mastery, we're actually going to see some other stuff come in here that is going to be a lot more specialized. For example, if I'm flying a Loki and I'm just using auto cannons on it, and I'm just using it as a shield tank auto cannon ratting fit, I don't give a damn about remote shield booster skills. I'm never using it as a logic ship, right? I might decide that looking at this, medium missiles, yeah, all these heavy assault missiles, light missiles, this kind of stuff in here. If I'm never going to use heavy assault missiles on a Loki, these aren't worth training, right? These skills just are not worth going into just to tick off mastery. But what you can do is look at the ship you want to fly. So we're going to go back to the Varga for this and go, right, battleship navigation. What do these skills do? Oh, 5% bonus to sub warp ship velocity. That could be useful. It's not mad because, you know, we're going to be in bastion mode and not really moving that much. Spaceship command. Yeah, that's going to be necessary. Core sh spaceship operation, probably worth training. Core weapon fitting, probably worth training. Ladar target management, probably worth training. Projectile turrets, we're going to be using those, right? Medium drones. Yeah, you might find that the fit you're using does use the drones, therefore you want to train those. It's a Varga, most of its damage doesn't really come from the drones though, so you might decide to skip these for the time being. Shield tanking, it's a shield tank fit, so yeah, we're going to go for that. Tackling, what do we have here? Propulsion jamming, uh, yeah, probably worth having because we are going to be using that mobile warp disruptor, so, you know, we're going to use some of those. Let's have a look at mastery level two. Battleship navigation, oh, there's some more useful stuff here now. Core spaceship operation, bit more useful stuff here for fitting and stuff like that. Um, but as we come further down, you might decide that, okay, let's look at radar target management. Those are all still pretty good. As we go further up, though, there are some... Where are we looking? Ladar sensor compensation. This is a skill at hardening ladar sensors against hostile electronic countermeasure modules, ECM. 4% improved ladar sensor strength per skill level. That's not really vital if you're not going to be PvPing. If you don't expect to have someone target lock jamming you, it's not vital. If you're just trying to get a Varga up and running for nullsec safe ratting, for example, that's not going to be a huge thing for you. You might still want to train it, but use your kind of judgment looking at these. And certainly once you get to sort of the fours and that, Again, these drone skills, yeah, the, the Varga does use drones, but just for a little bit of extra DPS when you're going up against the Drifter, for crying out loud. Otherwise, for small targets, you're just using smart bombs. Therefore, do I really want these trained all the way up to five and, you know, four in all of these, like advanced drone avionics? You might decide that's just really not something you need. So you can go through these and those are going to give you a nice suggestion of what you might want to skill into for that particular ship. And as with all of these things, if you find a skill you do want, so let's go into medium drones, for example, and decide that, oh, drone durability, that could be useful. You can go buy and train or just buy skill, buy and train, and it'll add it to your uh, skill queue at the bottom. Now, once you've got your skill queue set up, this is where I'd recommend going and watching my neural remapping, because we can actually have a look at all of these different skills, and we can see what their attributes are, intelligence and perception. If I then had a look at some of the other skills, intelligence and memory, what do we have here? Intelligence and memory, perception and willpower, intelligence and memory. So there's a lot of intelligence and memory here, so I can now decide, oh, I might want to remap to an intelligence and memory neural map. I might want to go out and buy some implants that are going to allow me to train those. The intelligence and the memory implant, at the very least, looks like it's going to be beneficial. I might go for some of the other ones that were in that list anyway. And it's up to you how you then, you know, modify that skill queue. That's where things get really complex. And we're going to touch upon this briefly because it is worth talking about. Just because you've decided you want to fly a Varga doesn't mean you need all of the skills to fly it right away. Instead, have a look at not fitting management, click the wrong thing. Have a look at what else is en route. So if, for example, I wanted to say fly a golem 
instead. I've decided that the golem something that I want to fly. As you can see here, I've currently got no Kaldari skills at all. This means that in order to even get to Kaldari Battleship, I'm going to have to train Kaldari Frigate 3, Kaldari Destroyer 3, Kaldari Cruiser 3, Kaldari Battle Cruiser 3, and then Kaldari Battleship 5. Now there's a lot of stuff I'm going to start en route here. And if I'm just sitting in a Corvette at the moment, it's a long wait to be able to actually do anything interesting in game, right? So I might sit there and go, well, okay, the Golem, for example, I'm going to be using missiles, cruise missiles, torpedoes, whatever the fit is uh, that you're looking at. I use a torpedo fit on my Golem. You can look at that and go, right, well, I'm going to be using torpedoes, I'm going to be using shields, therefore I'm going to be training some of the secondary missile skills, I'm going to be training shield skills, things like that. And you might decide, actually, en route, I wouldn't mind flying a Caracal. That could be quite fun, and that would give me some content to do in the meantime. I could run some Abyssal Dead Spaces with it, I could do some DED sites with it, some agent missions, maybe some C2 or C1 wormhole ratting even, you know, that could be interesting. And so you might decide to have a look at the skills relevant to that, and train some of those just to a basic level, even if only three or four, to get that done. So you've got something to use in the meantime. And who knows? You might find what I've found in the past where I've gone, oh, I really want to fly a panther or whatever. While I'm on that skill queue, I go, oh, actually, this was quite fun to fly. How about this one? This is like the upgraded version of it, right? Maybe may all I need now, because I've got good skills for a Kaldari uh, cruiser, for the Caracal. Let's just push that up to five and then add the heavy assault cruiser skill and try flying this bad boy. And you can do all kinds of stuff like that. Or maybe you've been flying a Caracal in PvP and you think, oh, that was fun. What about flying a Rook or a Falcon? And these are different things that you could look at there, although admittedly probably not so much the Falcon because it is a hybrid turret ship. But you get my point. You can look at different things en route to your target and maybe inject a couple of skills there just to keep you going with some content en route. Certainly, if you're looking at using a golem for wormhole ratting, then it's probably worth stopping at the Drake at least for a little bit to get the uh, Kaldari Battlecruiser to four and some of your medium missile skills, like your heavy missile skills and that, to four as well. So you can be ratting C2 wormholes with the Drake or C3 with the Cerberus and stuff like this whilst you wait for the golem to train. Well worth having a think about so that you're not just waiting for how long was it for that skill queue here? One month. 29 days, 5 hours, and 38 minutes in order to do anything. I'd rather stop and fly a Stabber or a Vagabond, or maybe a Hurricane or something, en route to the Varga. Something that's relevant to me on that journey. It may mean that rather than this being 1 month, 29 days, it's, you know, rather than just it being just under 2 months, it might be 2 months and 10 days. It's 10 days extra, but it means you actually have something to do whilst waiting for those skills to train. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, folks, that's about everything I can say for trying to come up with a different type of uh, skill list for you to train into. Of course, you should be aware, and if you've been watching my other Cat Skull Academy videos, you'll know there are skill plans set up by the game as well that give you a nice starting point. So if you were training into that Varga for PvE, you could have a look at some of the Enforcer bits and pieces and train into those. You can have a look at all of these down here and see different bits and pieces um, in order to unlock those and maybe try some of that, but it is up to you. I just wanted to show how to give a dedicated skill queue towards a ship that you're looking forward to flying, but just making sure that you don't dedicate everything to it and you maybe have some other stuff en route to do as well, otherwise you're going to get very, very bored very, very quickly. Let me know your thoughts and opinions though, folks. If you're watching this and you've been playing EVE Online for a while and you think there are some tips and tricks I've missed, drop them in the comments down below. I will pin the best ones there, so do check it out as well if you're a new player. Check through the comment section. I know they say never read the YouTube comment section, but my community's awesome, so 100% I do recommend getting down there and having a look through for some additional tips and tricks down there too. Finally, if having watched this, you think, actually, this Benzie guy is all right. I think he's doing good work for the community. I'd love to support that. Come find me on Patreon. You can pledge a monthly donation there to help support the channel, so the top of which get their names in the stars at the end of every single video, so you're about to see them in a moment. You can come to my PayPal tip jar and drop me a cup of coffee if you fancy just doing a one-off tip kind of thing. I do even have a Redbubble merchandise store that I make very little profit on whatsoever. I just love the concept of people wearing a Catskull Academy t-shirt or hoodie and walking around wherever town you live wearing my merchandise. It may be a bit vain, but to me, that's really cool. So thank you all for your unending support. You all mean the world to me. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.